You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's South Park After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's South Park After Show. Yeah, what was... Welcome Here back, we are. Folks. Here we are. Another Wednesday night. It is me, John Barrett, and him, Jack Waz, and Phil Svitek in the booth, making the noises. That's me, baby. So, so let's get into it. We're back. This was a fantastic episode. Oh man, we're back, and South Park is back with I'm their lovely titled Jubacabra. It's a return to form after the past couple weeks, which have been super aimless. Yeah. Uh, But before we get too deep into this, guys, girls, people of various non-gender specific Or non-religious. Let me just... Religious? Non-religious. There was no religion implied. You dumb fuck. You got a college education. Let me tell you about a little book. This book here, The Every Girl's Guide to Life by Maria Menounos. It yep. actually comes with a built-in sound chip. Which yeah, so when you those, open the cover, those sounds are made by the book. Yeah, it's like one of those Hallmark cards. You open it, and you either get cheers or jeers. You're making me horny. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, book, the book has some great things in it. That's actually Maria's natural speaking voice. What, yeah. you hear on, uh, what you hear on, what is she on, Extra or Access Hollywood or Inside? I want to wrestle you so freaking bad. Yeah. Yeah, one of those shows. He gives a shit. Uh, uh, when it, it's pitch corrected. Yeah, it's auto-tuned. Uh, same with Dancing with the Stars. That's a live pitch corrector, which is really impressive. Yeah, they're really good at that. But anyway, as I was saying, you guys saw Garden State, right? And how the shins changed your life. This book... You gotta is, hold it up a little bit more. This that, that book is your shins? This book is the shins of books. That's impressive. You will stop I mean, taking. I mean, you will t- stop taking your bipolar depression medicine, and your life will be better. And you won't go crazy from not being on your medication that you need that a doctor prescribed to you. David Foster Wallace was busy reading this book before he killed himself. He stopped reading the book long enough to take his own life. <laughs> and so we bring David <laughs> Foster Wallace back into this. Fuck that guy. Uh, Jack and I have a little feud. Uh, he can't read, and I think David Foster Wallace. I can great. read. I just prefer Garfield books. <laughs> right, right. I'm For sorry. For example, Garfield they... sitting around the house. Our systems detect <clears throat> that a host has wandered off the subject. Please return at once. Phil, I like having you out here a lot more because you don't get as many of those awful sound effects. Yeah, that I hate that thing. Um. Anyway, I mean, it does that thing that I hate does raise a good point. There was an episode of South Park tonight. There was. And it was pretty gosh darn good. Uh, I don't know why, but all of South Park's Easter episodes are just fantastic. They knock them right out of the park. Yeah, which is weird because Easter is just not a holiday with a lot to say. I mean, South Park tends to do holiday episodes incredibly well. Yeah, they nail them. They're Halloween episodes, they're Christmas episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the Easter episodes, they... They really have a fantastic sensibility when it comes to... I mean, a lot of shows fall on holiday episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, but this one. This I really... I mean, for me, Hair Club for Men, that was just a phenomenal, hilarious that, Easter egg. That, that, I mean, that's one of the all-time greatest South Park episodes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think this was quite on the level of Hair Club for Men, um, just because that, that was also just a really smart, pointed parody of... Um, Da Vinci, Vinci Angels, Code and all that, and Angels and Demons, and yeah, all that crap. yeah, yeah. It was that that one was brilliant. Plus, it had 
Kyle actually killing Jesus. Yeah. Saying the words, please don't tell Eric Cartman about this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there are some great moments in that episode, but there are there are some equally great moments in this episode, I would say. Yeah, I mean, Ju Jupacabra is fantastic. I also, I love that they open, uh, Jack here um, was... I was out drinking. Uh, I was going to give you an out and say you were saving a busload of orphans. Uh, While out drinking. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Yeah, I mean, they probably wouldn't have been in trouble if I wasn't drinking. In the yeah, first that's what I... I was I figured that was implied. Yeah. Um, but it starts with uh um this episode started with uh Kyle waking up and walking downstairs and uh hearing his mother teach Eric Cartman what Passover is. <laughs> um which set off in my head, oh god, this is gonna be bad. Yeah, anytime Judaism is brought up even remotely around Cartman, you know there's gonna be a hate crime in the episode. Oh yes. This wasn't quite as bad as Passion of the Jew, where <laughs> Cartman led his own neo-Nazi rally down the street, but... But it's up there. Um, however, it's interesting uh, because I have no idea whatsoever about the actual connection between um, Easter and Passover. Like, I know what Passover's about. You know, like I know what happened because the Rugrats did a really good Passover episode. They did not as many, uh, not as many ghosts with their throats slit in the Rugrats. No, uh, no, not as many lambs getting their throats That's slit. It. Uh, for those of you who are n not well versed in either the Rugrats or Judaism, or t tonight's episode of South Park, which sort of glances over all of this, uh, Passover uh, was when uh, Here God we go. I got the official definition. Or slash uh, description. Uh, Passover is a Jewish holiday and festival. It come on, uh, Jesus, I'm reading this from far away. You want me to it, just tell you? Because like I sure. can John, tell John you. John has it. You're a scholar. Go ahead. Uh, basically, uh, God started punishing the Egyptians for treating the Hebrews wrong. So uh, Moses was like, "Yo, God, what's the deal?" And God was like, "Here's the deal." And he laid out all the plagues that were going to befall everyone in Egypt, and then said. But listen, you want to be cool with me, God? Stay in your houses and paint some lamb's blood on it. And I'll be like, oh, all right, these are my people. I'm not going to smite them. I'm not going to make their head, their children's heads explode. Not going to make their children's heads explode. So uh, while this was a pretty graphic depiction of all that, it was that's pretty accurate. what the Bible says happened. Yeah, although I'm not sure there's a part in the Bible where Pharaoh talks about Letting the Jews go would be like the North letting the South go in the Civil War. Yeah, I don't know if Which that would have made sense. sense. I mean, you know, obviously, duh. Like, that's exactly right. Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't think it happened in the Bible. Probably not. I mean, I, you know, I Jack can't read, so he doesn't know. I mean, I think it happened in the Bible, but one of the non-canon verses. Right. There's a lot of really weird non-canon stuff that's in the Bible. That's a good point, yeah. It's like, a, it's like, like Star Wars fan fiction in the Bible. It is. It's... Ugh. Uh, speaking of which, uh, speaking of Star Wars fan fiction Bible stuff, uh, we've got this Easter celebration with the bunnies and the eggs going on, and which, as oh, we all know, is celebrating Saint Peter. Saint Peter the Rabbit. The rabbit. Um, we should you should all know that that's canon from South Park. Um, but uh, I love that the whole conceit of this episode is that Cartman invented a Jewish chubacabra known as the Ju Jubacabra. Uh, so that he could scare everyone out of the Easter egg contest held by Super Fun or Superfoods, whose only uh, grocery store whose only concerns are safety and fun. And they're fourth and fun and sixth and safety. Fourth and fun and sixth and safety. So Eric is trying to scare everyone out of their Easter egg contest but, so that he can win. But as it turns out, he gets in a heap of trouble. Uh, he, God which damn is it. one of the better recurring gags tonight. So here's the th we get Cartman at Cartman's most Cartmany. Yeah, I mean in this episode. I, I, I rewatched uh, Scott Tenman Must Die the other night. Uh huh. And you know they've really gotten away from the whole Cartman's a violent sociopath thing right. the past couple seasons. But my God, was that in full form? Tonight. It was great because the whole the whole conceit of the episode in the first half is that Cartman is a selfish prick. And he'll do whatever he can to get his way, including fake fake a Jewish chubacabra 
to one, win the egg Easter hunt, egg hunt. And two, get superfood to fly him to, as he pronounces it, <laughs> Nassau in the Bahamas. <laughs> and that was so great. I mean, it, it, I love how they set up where everyone placated to him. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And because Car Car Carmen's a terrorist, and he has to get what he wants, or everyone loses. <laughs> yeah. So he gets but to go he on. Was, he gets to go he, on the shark-infested slip and slide. And that's a real thing. I know at Atlantis. That, I mean, nice uh, plug for Atlantis. They made yeah. it look really fun. I want to go there now. Yeah, I want to go to Atlantis too. I, I want to Atlantis. Atlantis. Hook us up. Atlantis people. We will go there, and we're not anti-Semitic. Be better than Dodge because Dodge didn't give me a free Dodge after thanking Dodge uh, Archer? after Archer. That's because Dodge is a bunch of butt fuckers. There's a reason there. There's a reason the American car market is in the fucking toilet. I didn't say that. Jack did. Dodge. I didn't. I didn't say that. Our good sponsors, Bing and Akamai Technologies, did. God damn it! But Atlantis. Atlantis is mad cool, yo. Yeah, Mantis is... Uh, Mantis? Yeah. Mantis. Mm -hmm. Mantis the casino resort. Praying Mantises. I love it. Anyway, so Carmen gets to go on the super cool water slide, and then fly back to Colorado, and meet the Bigfoot guys. Oh my god. god that was brilliant. That was great. As, as someone that actually works in reality TV, mm. god, that felt just so nice. Just getting yeah. to watch that, because it's, it's all a bunch of crap. Yeah. Um, before we get too into that part of the topic. I just want to point out some of the really Cartman-y lines that Cartman mm -hmm. has. Uh, when he first goes on the hunt for the ju jubacabra with Butters, he sa he trains Butters to say the mating call of the jubacabra, <laughs> which is, no Christ! No Christ! <laughs> I'm really not buying this whole Christ thing. <laughs> which is... Um, Terrific, because obviously that's all Jews talk about is... Jesus is a lie. Is how Jesus, Jesus is, a lie. is a lie. Right. How uh, Jesus is not the divine son of God uh, or God made man, depending on which particular sect of the Christian what, church What was the one fall. line? Uh, shit. Right when I went to take a pee. That was fantastic. Uh, Hebrew jeebies? Not, not Hebrew jeebies. Oh, that's pretty wonderful. Uh, That's oh, me. I'm, oh, I'm peeing in the he has no, he, yeah, he has no idea that Jesus died for our sins. I think is <laughs> one of it. the, yeah, that's it. Um, I think I, that was in reference to the Jubacabra. Um, I, but it was in the 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 in the super superfoods headquarters. The, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh my God, it's just, it's just oh, a good episode. oh man, and then another another great um, moment of Cartman being Cartman. Is when he's actually convinced that the uh, jubacabra exists, and he's trying to protect himself from it. He uh, stations himself in a church <laughs> alone, and has the rest of the kids butters stand have a guard shotgun outside. outside. And then they go to Wing Street, of course. <laughs> oh man, I want wings. I want some damn wings. I, I, I love that song. Says. Jesus loves me. This I know because Republicans tell, tell me, me so. so. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Uh, and then. Brilliant. He gets kidnapped by the guy, the uh, crypt. No, no. Super he gets kidna kidnapped by Superfood, which puts him in a heap of trouble. Yep. Heeb. H E E B, which for those of you who are not racist, um, is a uh, epithet for Jewish folk. Yep. And short for Hebrew. So they put him in a bunny costume and a great flashback to Hair Club for Men. Yep. And chain him to a rock, much like Jurassic Park. <laughs> As bait. As bait. And uh, then <laughs> smear his face with blood. Chicken blood. <laughs> because that's how that's how you, that's how you, uh, that's how you attract the jupacabra. jupacabra, obviously. So we see scary eyes looking at him. Right. And we're thinking, oh, you know, jupacabra might actually exist. Mm -hmm. Weirder things have happened in South Park. But, but no. It's just it's the cryptozoologist. Let's, let's get over to the cryptozoology the and uh, those sort of stupid reality shows. Yeah. Well, before we, do, I just want to make one comment real quick. Yeah. I love how uh, the superfood guys or one of them goes to um, to Kyle's. Oh house. my he's god! Like, uh, now like, listen, superfoods is not <laughs> anti-Semitic, <laughs> but <laughs> if there is a jubacabra. Uh, just let it know that the sa there's a sacrifice for it in the park tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. I, I love whenever you hear the phrase, blank isn't an anti-Semitic organization, but... but. <laughs> uh, one of the greatest conceits in the English language. Yeah, really. I'm not a racist, but... but. 
Um, <laughs> oh, also, and just one last thing about Cartman being Cartman is after he's made his conversion to Judaism, and he says, Christ did not die for our sins, and God is angry. <laughs> 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 that's his. He's got such a basic understanding of what Judaism <laughs> exactly. is. Exactly. I love his flashback. Well, so the uh, so the cryptozoologists shoot him with a tranquilizer. Yep. He falls face down, and, and he, he's in, in ancient Egypt. He is the son of the pharaoh, who, I mean, is gonna get smited super hard, like yeah. super, like face explodingly hard. Li- li- yeah. And so we watch him experience all the plagues, the locusts, raining frogs, which, as everyone pointed out, and I've always thought, it's been to the is frogs. A, that's a dick move, God. Yeah, I mean, God, <laughs> what the hell, dude? Oh, like, I do love Cartman screaming, God's not a dick. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> he is a total dick. God's an asshole. Um, but Car- that, So then, obviously, it gets to the next level of the plague, which is killing the firstborn son of every Egyptian family, and... Cartman starts watching every firstborn male child's head explode. (laughs) And there's this one mother with her toddler, like her, like two, three year old son. And his last words are, Mommy, don't let God kill me. (laughs) And then his head blows up. And then finally, Cartman's head, like, it goes goes full on scanners. Just boom. Straight up David Cronenberg stuff right there. It really was. Although, he died in his dream, yet he was still screaming on the ground. Yeah, that's weird. Can you die in a dream and not wake up? Um, I, Bruce Springsteen taught me that if you die in your dreams, you really die in your sleep. Huh. Uh, I think that's a line. That's a line. Is, from, he, is he a registered psychologist? Yes. Or psychiatrist? Yes. And that's a line from one of the songs on Tunnel of Love. Can we talk about him and the Pharaoh and talking about the South and the North? We mentioned that. Yeah, ass. Oh, well, whatever. Why don't you pay attention to your own show, Phil? Yeah, get out of the fucking booth and in here with us, like, man. Your head is so far up your ass that it's back at where your head should be again. I was trying to come up with a a better one, but I I, I got nothing. There we go. Um, Anyway, so we've got these cryptozoologists... Which, in my opinion, continues their uh, the uh, latest the latest South Park trend of taking on of you know going taking after targets that just the low the low hanging fruit. Who cares? Yeah, um, but they but actually, they did a good job. Yeah, they do something here that's really clever. Well, not clever. It's just it's straight up mean and it's fantastic. Which is uh, anyone who believes in Bigfoot is either lying or stupid. And they're and all stupid. They are, they're exactly correct, and these people are stupid. <laughs> Bobo, what do you think? Bobo thinks scary. <laughs> well, their, justif- their justification you- for shooting him was like, we need proof. Here's God Bobo shoot him with. <laughs> <laughs> we need evidence. Evidence, that's it. <laughs> do, any, do either of you watch that uh, show on Animal Planet, Finding Bigfoot? God, no. Nope. No, so we have no... Re- Damn. If only. I've Would seen you? a few episodes of it, um, and there is a guy who looks like Bobo. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty on the mark. Like, that's it's pretty spot on for how that group looks. They're, like, real backwoods. Like, real... <laughs> I mean, I think they're in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. But, like, they look like real Deep South types. I can't remember who it was. Uh, one of my buddies worked on... Uh, on the lot where the production offices for Chasing Bigfoot was. Uh-huh. And he would actually stop by the office and talk to the PA and be like, hey, you find Bigfoot yet? <laughs> Just so he could be a dick. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but yeah, uh, totally, totally accurate to my experience with the Finding Bigfoot show. Oh, yeah. Also, cryptozoologist is a really like sciencey sounding name for, for a I bunch of made people up monsters who look who look at hoax videos all the time. Yeah. I love the dragon clip art of a dog to yeah. prove that it can't yeah. be the same size. It's way bigger than this clip art of a dog we dragged in. <laughs> Usually they're yellow. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, this is a and great their temperature episode. didn't match either. Yep. Yeah, the temperature didn't match what a normal dog. I guess a normal dog is yellow. On a yep. Temperature. I, also, uh, that those temperature things that you're doing on those that is for c- color temperature. Yep. That's not designed to measure the yeah, actual, it's not actual thermal physical scan. temperature. Because, I mean, not to totally nerd out. 
but camera uh, Cartman's camera was just an HD camera. Yeah, it was it not no, an infrared camera. Yeah. It wasn't like predator eyes. He had yeah. nothing that could really. They were just looking at HD footage of it. That you can't transfer the heat vision onto that. Thank Idiots. You. Thank you, John. So we get to the end of the episode, and all the kids are running around playing, and Cartman tries to give his big speech about converting to Judaism, mm -hmm. and he's called a heathen. That's right, because now he's a heathen. He's he is now he knows that God is a him. dick. God is angry, and Christ did not die for our sins. <laughs> and with that, I say, how are, how are they going to return to the status quo next week? I really don't know, but I think that's a question for another section. It is. Let's go to But commercial. anyway, Christ did not die for our sins and God is angry, so let's go to commercial on that. After Buzz TV. Hi. I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag coworkers about it at the water cooler. Then I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzz TV produces after show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post game wrap up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after shows from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? Literary genius and I'm dead. And so, now, <laughs> your AfterBuzz TV. Thanks. Thank <laughs> Thanks for coming back in on Jack's impression of David Foster Wallace. <laughs> um, all right, so I predict, well, I predict that they've got a little bit of a, you know, corner writing situation that they have to get out of. Yeah, because Cartman's now Jewish. Yeah, Cartman's now a devout Jew. So how are they going to play with that? Uh, another dream sequence where Jesus comes back? I don't know. Yeah, we haven't seen Jesus since the Hair Club for Men. Yeah, we haven't seen... It's been a while. He used to be yeah. a recurring character on South Park. Yeah, so I think maybe we'll see Jesus come back That'd and be fun. knock some sense into Cartman and so you know, that he can see the light of Christ again. You know, uh, at the end of that, I was really expecting the Jupacabra to actually show up and start slaughtering children. Yeah, I was kind of I was, I was hoping for that uh, in my head. I don't know if I was hoping for it. I just, like, that's the expectation that was set up for me. Yeah, and but I didn't quite deliver. Still, yeah. good episode. Yeah, very, very solid episode. So, predictions. Uh, what other low-hanging fruit is there that yeah. after? Uh, I mean... I don't know, TV dinners? Yeah. Lady yeah. drivers? Uh, pet rocks, leisure suits. Yeah, uh, lapels. Uh, ankles, seeing ankles. Um, probably... Jazz. Yeah, I can see they're doing a whole episode on jazz. Yeah, they're going to do a jazz episode. It was the demon's music. Yeah, and about how all these drunkards are partying to jazz and smoking their marijuana cigarettes yeah. and damn flappers yeah with their short hair and smoking cigarettes in public like men you know i would uh i'd actually really like to see, one of my favorite all-time south park episodes was uh was return of the two towers to uh, return of the fellowship of the rings of the two towers uh fantastic episode did a lord of the rings parody mm -hmm. i'm super into game of thrones now and I really want them to do a Game of Thrones thing because all all the show is is titties and violence. Yeah, and South Park can do that so well. But they tell human stories in a fantasy setting. It's true. Um, so maybe that's 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 a little bit medium hanging fruit. Yeah. I'd say it's, um, it's in the zeitgeist, but it's not. Quite. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think of like the lowest hanging fruit, and like basically they've already done a Jersey Shore <laughs> episode, and like yeah. Based on the trajectory touched, of yeah. this season, like I feel like that's where they'd end up going. Yeah. Despite it being a three year old reference at this point. I guess two. I don't know. Oh, Jersey Shore? Yeah. Like it would be hot to make a joke about Jersey Shore like three years ago. Yeah. But they already did three but, years ago. Right. Um I don't know. I don't know. So there it is. Cool. Uh wrapping it up. Yeah. Right on. I'm John Barrett. Uh I'm, can I say my name? No. Well, fuck you then.
That's Jack Waz. You can say your name now. Jack Waz? It's uh, a great name. It is a good name. We got Phil Svitek in the booth. Phil Svitek's on in there. What's you up? Can- What's up? I, I, you know, here's my prediction. I would, um, did you guys hear the story about the kid who uh, filmed his roommate having gay sex? No. Yes. Well, it turned out to be incompletely true. It, 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 completely untrue. That's it. No, yeah, the guy, the guy who was filmed having it wasn't even having sex. It was just like making out with his boyfriend. Uh, after he found out that his roommate had been filming it and broadcast it on Twitter and Facebook, he jumped off the George Washington Bridge. Cool. So Phil wants to see the lighter version of that. Well, guess what? It turns out that it's a complete farce. The kid didn't even do it. Did Didn't not jump off do the bridge because that kid's fucking dead. No, the kid jumped off the bridge, but that's because he was depressed, not because the roommate did anything. Well, also the roommate got sentenced to what, like five years or something like that. Um, I don't. Crazy. I completely out of. Okay. Ty- Ty- Tyler Clemente is the case. Phil Phil uh, wants that to be next week's episode. Anyway, you can find me on Twitter at a- at J Dugan Barrett. You can find me on Twitter at at Jack Waz. You can find me on Tumblr at botmarykill.tumblr.com. And remember to keep checking out AfterBuzz TV and uh, see us next week. And rate and comment on iTunes. And rate and comment on iTunes and see us next week. Same bat time. Same bat place. Channel. Channel. Yeah, same shit. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.